All right, everybody, it is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the lignification of fig trees. This is, I believe, a really important topic. It can tell you a lot about your fig tree. It can tell you a lot about the soil. It's a very revealing um, thing that you can observe on your trees while they're dormant. You know, I think we mainly focus about observing our trees during the growing season. We don't put a lot of attention in actually during the dormancy process in the winter a lot of us are just inside and don't want to be bothered and be out here uh, but again i think there's a lot to learn so one of the major things i think uh, and at least this is maybe not 100 percent proven but there is this is factual to some degree that depending on the level of lignification of your tree how well lignified it is right if it's green and soft and not really hard then you will see really quite not even that that cold of temperatures actually damage your tree in those locations so you may even see a 20 or 25 degree low that could come in and actually kill off parts of the tree because it's not hardened it's not lignified and then of course the more lignified it gets it seems like at least my theory is and maybe others have this have a similar theory that the more lignified it is, the hardier, the lower the temperatures it can withstand. So if you have temperatures at zero or five degrees Fahrenheit, that's really extreme. But if it is really well lignified, you could see your tree actually withstand those temperatures with very minimal or no damage at all. And that's of course variety dependent as well. But this is a, a big reason why people, let's say in Louisiana or Florida or really southern places that have an absolute ton of rain what ends up happening is throughout their season the trees just continue to grow and grow and grow and they keep growing and they don't tend to stop because that water in our soil is the on or off switch of, of our growth so if in the summer let's say here maybe I don't have enough water for the trees which actually is sort of unlikely these trees just grow all season but let's say i didn't have enough water then the growth would stop and that's kind of what you want at some point in the summer if i lived in california the growth would you know grow in the spring and then at some point in the summer the growth would would cease and when it ceases like that it gives the branches plenty of time there's plenty of photosynthesis for the trees to actually lignify and harden up in time in preparation for the winter but if i'm in louisiana or florida or somewhere very rainy all season the trees just continue to grow and they don't lignify in time and then therefore you see actually quite a bit of damage in those locations from the cold that may only be about 20 to 25 degrees fahrenheit it's kind of crazy whereas there are other locations in the united states where Maybe even here, you could see a tree survive zero degrees Fahrenheit. And you would think, wow, what is the, the reason for that? Why is someone in Pennsylvania so many, you know, what is that, thousands of miles or a thousand plus miles north of zone seven versus a Louisiana climate, which is like a zone nine? How is that possible that you're seeing such a huge difference in what the tree can withstand in terms of the cold uh, and it really i i believe is in that water so we're going to compare actually a couple trees very quickly this this section here we're going to look at we're going to look at the potted trees and we're also going to look at the trees in the front of my house which are in a very dry location um, and we'll explain all that in a bit but what is one point I think people don't, don't know typically is that the trees will not continue to lignify after the leaves have fallen. You need the photosynthesis. You need that, that leaves, those leaves for the tree to continue that lignification process. So even though a lot of these branches are still a bit green, they are hardened, but they're not perfectly lignified like some other branching further down on the tree. So it's critical, I think, that you understand that the tree will just not continue to lignify until the spring. Um, in the spring, it'll start to leaf out. It has photosynthesis now. 
and that process will continue. Assuming these leaves, these branches here, excuse me, get through the winter time into the spring, this will eventually correct itself of having improper lignification. It will eventually be soft. So this is the west side here, plenty of water um, in the soil here. The, as I said, the water is the on or off switch of the growth. Um, looking at a lot of the branches here, you can see that there isn't actually not a ton of green in some of the varieties. It does depend on the variety. It also depends on the, uh, the branch that I had pruned, you know, so this branch here is a bit taller potentially than the other branches that I pruned and the taller branches could potentially be growing a lot more throughout the summer and therefore are not lignified as much. But something lower like this, that's a bit smaller. This I believe is, uh, yeah, this is Barb alone, similar to White Marseille, a very good variety for cold, uh, colder places. You can see the lignification on that, it's pretty good. You know, there is some green mixed in there on the tips, which is not perfect, but it's better than, than most. Uh, here is a White Marseille, which is actually very good, I would argue. Uh, I'm trying to focus this here for you guys. New lens. We did take it off autofocus, but there you go. So that's pretty good uh, in terms of, I would say most of the trees throughout here. Let me show you another improved. So actually this is LSU Tiger. It looks pretty good as well. Um, so that's pretty decent. You know, the tip doesn't look great, but the rest of this looks pretty good. And then what's also interesting is that there is a theory and I sort of subscribe to this theory that you can see here on the branch, it looks a bit shriveled. See these lines that go down the branch? Someone may think, well, this is just not good that the, the tree or the branch doesn't have enough water in it. It's desiccating. Um, and that's kind of what you want. This is, I think, a next level of lignification. The less water in the drier soils, drier locations, people just report incredible hardiness. Um, also, there is something to be said about potassium. I think one of the better varieties here, actually, that has lignified well is LSU Holier, or LSU Huye, I believe is how you would pronounce it. This is done extremely well in so many ways that the, does this variety do well. Um, it's kind of crazy. Let me zoom in just a second here, just a little smidge. But it is like almost perfect in its ligni lignification. I'd be very interested to see if that one survived the winter here. Here's a tree that we did not cut back um, to six to 12 inches. This is our Texas BA1, and the lignification on that looks fantastic. Um, so if this thing had stopped at some point in the summer, as I think most of the trees that I don't cut back to six to 12 inches, most of them actually, at some point in the summer, just stop growing. Little Ruby here is the same thing where we didn't cut this way back. Um, it survived the winter last year. The lignification is absolutely perfect. It doesn't get any better than this. This tree, I have no doubt, will survive the winter. So it's amazing, I think, just to see different practices, different um, ways of growing them, different locations of my yard. I wanna show you, we're gonna look at the potted trees as well in a second, but I wanna show you a Campanieri over here. Here's Campanieri. This is also one of the best varieties for proper lignification. Um, and it, it's supposed to be a very hardy variety, right? That's the, the wrap on it. And I think it's, easily determined by the lignification because it dies early in the summer. At a certain point, it naturally just stops growing. Whereas some of these other trees continue and continue and continue. And there's plenty of green up in here. You know, there's plenty of green up on these, especially the younger trees haven't dug themselves in. This LSU Champagne, which is just massive. Azores Dark tends to stop growing. It just seems a bit more dwarf as well. So maybe that has something to do with it. Um, here's a Grease de St. Jean, which doesn't look as great as some of these other varieties. It just, you know, it is what it is. And then if I take you guys 
to where we're doing our hardiness experiment. This is the front of the house where it's very dry. And I purposely wanted this area to be for the hardiness experiment because these trees are in a drier spot. The drier the soil, the better the lignification, the better the lignification, the better they could survive the winter. Here's a campaneria I have planted. It didn't prune it much at all. I didn't want to touch these trees for the most part because I'd rather get them through the winter and then take the cuttings I want in the spring. But you can see here, I mean, this is just like perfect. Uh, although I don't, I don't think it really looks all that different, too different than the Campanieri we looked at on the west side. So this is a bit different here, not a bit different as I would have expected from this drier soil. Here's a variety that didn't grow much this year either. Here's a Michurinska 10 or Floria, very good lignification. Um, here's St. Martin, which is supposed to, you know, be hardy to even below zero. But uh, again, it just, actually the lignification on this isn't as good. So we'll see. There's a hardy Chicago there that's super well lignified. Um, Teramo, which is also an extremely hardy variety. Doesn't have the lignification as much as um, some of these other varieties. So we'll see. I'm actually kind of hoping for something really cold like zero degrees this winter and we'll see if those trees they look pretty decent but the potted trees i'm going to show you guys in a minute look even better and it's not even close i think with some of these potted trees um you know maybe the lsu huye or the campaneri can maybe compete or let's say actually the little ruby actually would be even better, I think the Little Ruby is probably the most lignified of all the trees. Um, but the fact that we can 100% control the water in these containers, it goes a really long way towards proper lignification. And I kid you not, every single variety here on the patio is super well lignified. Um, really dark wood. This actually, this stretch of growth here doesn't uh, look that well, that lignified. Here's even a branch that just shot up from the base and that's even well lignified. You know, like a sucker, like if we cut it back to six to 12 inches. So it's just very interesting, I think, to compare the trees, the locations of the trees, how they were grown, how much water they received. What does this all mean for their hardiness? You know, um, it's just kind of, I think a very interesting and important topic that doesn't get enough, uh, enough attention, right? So that's kind of it here, I think, that I wanted to discuss this with you all and show you guys the lignification of these trees and, um, you know, discuss, of course, the points that we mentioned and, and the differences between the two and comparing the, them between the, the, uh, the three, I should say, the three locations that we showed you guys. I think there might be one other point I wanted to make um, regarding lignification. So anyway, guys, it's a really, I think, an interesting topic, an interesting comparison that could be made between the three locations, the three different ways, in a sense, maybe even the four different ways, if you count the little ruby, of how we're growing the trees and really observing the trees, how, you know, when they stop growing in the summer, how that correlates to now, how water plays a part in all this. And then to finish it all off, it really, you won't really know 
I guess, the end, end result until we actually see a really uh, intense cold. So when we see that extreme winter low, we'll know. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon. Hit that subscribe button. Catch you guys for the next video. Take care.